So as you can see, I don't have. Can you guys read the screen okay? The blue. The blue. Yes. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. <laughs> so, so is that you just give the dash L and download it into the site's domain modules directory? Is that right? Yes. Oh, it's specified in the Drush RC config file, which you copy into your your uh, active Drupal instance, and you can define which multi-site to use. You can define which aliases you like. There's all sorts of things you can configure for that. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, there's a lot of stuff in the RC file which you can tweak to customize the behavior of, uh, of Drush. So, um, so we downloaded it, but it's still not enabled. So we're going to Drush enable share this. And so it's just going to enable it, and then all of a sudden the share this module is available on my site now.
if you look at the available updates, this is what really got me. Um, you notice that a bunch of my modules are out of date. Admin menu, CCK, I have a couple path redirect, uh, subscriptions. Those are out of date. So this is where Drush can really save you a lot of time, just typing Drush, update. And so it's going to examine your installation, compare it against what's available from the Drush.org site. And then you'll see it'll give you a perfect table of what's on your site and then where there's updates available. And then also it's going to tell you which modules it wants to update. You can see admin menu, CCK, uh, I can't give at this angle, what's there at the end. But also, one of the things that also mentions though is you should do this on a, a staging or dev site because it, it's been my experience, it's not 100%. Um, Drush works great for me, I'd say about 80% of the time, but every once in a while, if there's like a poorly written module, it'll introduce some kind of error where everything isn't all easy peasy. So, I'd recommend you know, you're running this on a dev or staging site to do all your module updates and then push it up to your production site once you verify that everything's working correctly. So anyhow, once to update a whole bunch of modules, you just type in yes, and then now it's just going out grabbing the latest and greatest from people at work, and it's going to also let me know what database updates it's going to do, and then it's going to run update.php. So instead of having to go to each project site under Drupal.org, downloading it, putting it in my modules directory, and then uh, updating it that way, running the update.php, it did it all in pretty much one line. So that this is what really kind of got me when, when I discovered Drush. Does anybody have, anybody have any questions at this point? Yeah. Um, at DC, they noted that the uh, update had to be run which version by uh, saying which module to update and also the version. Like say if you did a uh, crush, uh, what was it? Um, let me see. I think it was uh, info, uh, what was the one that just shared this? It also tell you all the, the versions available, and if you wanted to, you could manually specify which release you want to install into your Drupal site. Um, but as for grabbing, you know, what you just suspect, I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, does anybody? Can you can you choose uh, which one to update? Yeah, you can also choose exactly which modules you want to update by manually specifying. Let's say, for example, if uh, I just wanted to update CCK and none of the other modules because there's maybe problems with them, no of the issues or something. This isn't going to do anything because it's already been updated, but that's how you just manually update um, one module or just the select module. You just pass each module name on the command line. And uh, does it take care of case where you have to run update one? Actually, I haven't run into that. If you do, so, there's some kind of one update in the three error message some of the update will tend to do it again. Oh, right. In that case, it, it, it will spit out the error codes or error messages. And then in that case, you, you, you can see there's a brush or is it update DB somewhere on this list. And that runs the update. But since we just updated it, there's nothing to do right now. Okay, now backing up, you can use 
brush to help you back up your coupon installation. Like I said, it's, there's two parts to backing up your site. And I'm sure as a lot of you understand, there's the database and then there's the file system. To back up the database, you'll see it there, there's a brush SQL dump, which is equivalent to MySQL dump. Brush SQL dump backup.sql. So essentially what SQL dump does is it's going to print out an uh, SQL, a database dump, to the to standard out, which doesn't really do you much. But then when I pipe, when I uh, direct it, oops. let's see, Josh, SQL dump. When I, I give it that bracket, or the, that, I'm gonna, that tells bash shell to put whatever is printed out the standard out into a file. So I'm gonna put it into that of the SQL. And so now to look at that of the SQL, you can see this is a, a nice database dump. So if my database gets wiped out for whatever reason, uh, I can recreate it using this. If you have uh, different databases, then you just, you could either, if you just do it from the command line, like say I uh, want to dump the, right now the baby rock and the default are using the same database, but if you had different databases specified in each settings at PHP, you just specify the, uh, You can just specify the multi-site name, and it'll pick up the settings from that multi-site settings at PHP, and it'll uh, dump that that database. Okay. So then after that, you can see I have the, the backup that SQL in there. Um, to do a full backup, you want to backup the file system. I'm just going to use the tar. Is everybody familiar with tar? Okay, this is going to be very terribly exciting. R C S C. So um, now after this is done, I'm going to have a full backup, and then I'm going to back up my file system and my database, which I can use to reproduce the site. So now I have a snapshot of the site as of about. Four seconds ago. Okay. Now, uh, let's say um, something really bad happened. And all of this, whoops, well, let's say everything except those directories got wiped out. Luckily, I have my backup. They wrap back up that TTZ that I can use. And first, I just uh, first untar the get the file system going, right? Oops. So now I have the file system back. And then, say, for example, the database got wiped out. Fresh has a whole bunch of SQL. has a whole bunch of SQL commands, which help. So the one that, that I use is a stretch SQL connect for the restore. Yeah, stretch SQL connect. And notice that I give the back ticks. Uh, for the, those of you that aren't familiar with the shell scripting, the, the back ticks that surround brush SQL connect essentially tell the shell to uh, execute whatever that command spits out. So if I just type in drush SQL connect, it's going to spit out a command line, which if I type that in and ran it, 
it would connect me to MySQL. So now I'm just going to close the back fix. And so it's actually going to run that. And so for those of you that are familiar with the MySQL command line, oops. Now I'm connected to MySQL. So I'm just going to do that and then pipe in the backup that SQL. And now that my database is recreated from whatever snapshot that I took from this backup. Does that make sense to everybody? Oh. Yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. So and then you can set, if you start changing these, then you can start making them into a script or whatever. So you can make a, take a snapshot, you know, every week, every day, or you know, whatever you need to take. So, let's see. Okay, there's a couple of batches. One year, oops, you want to get that? Okay, there's a couple of batches when you're uh, working with fresh scripts. Uh, you have to be careful with your paths if you're scripting with it. A lot of the times I find you just have to use the full path to any files that you're working with. Um, if you're using the old version of fresh, uh, the old version, the one point, whatever version, used to be a module that you'd actually install into your site's all modules directory, and that's no longer the case. So if uh, you have that on your installation, uh, delete it, remove any traces that you have of it, and, um, and you'll be fine. Okay, let's see. Okay, sometimes the module directory structures change. This one uh, caught me uh, last week. Uh, sometimes the module uh, directory structures change, and then like this caught me with the, what was it, file, file field token. I think it went from being a directory that to being like an INC file, right? And so when I updated the module, it updated the, it, it downloaded the INC file and laid it on the system, but that old directory was still there. And so after I did the update and I went to check the site, nothing was coming up. I just got a blank screen, which is pretty much universally never good. <laughs> um, and so when I checked the, checked the uh, error log, um, I saw that, what was it, file field something was, a function was being redeclared. So if you see those, uh, if you check your error logs and you see that a function is being redeclared, that's probably because there's still some cruft left over from the previous module and you're getting these, uh, these function, uh, redeclared function errors. Um, and then also just make sure you use the same version of PHP as Apache. Like I mentioned before, if you use the one that comes with OSX, um, I think it's missing some, some modules or something new. I think it was a MySQL and it just really doesn't work, so we have to use the one, uh, do that little workaround that I explained earlier, to use the one from MAMP. For the Linux people, I think you guys will follow me just fine. Okay. Alright, so let's see how you start working. Uh, using Thrush script. This is, this is a really cool feature of Thrush. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff. I'm just going over a couple features. Uh, the ones that I personally use that have saved my butt and saved me a lot of time. So there's a Thrush script command. Oops. Thrush help script. Which allows you to write a PHP script and run it with the full uh, Drupal APIs available to you, which is really cool. So you can use all that if you want to, you know, create a whole bunch of nodes on the fly or tweak a lot of nodes. Uh, you, you can do that. So let's see. Oops. So on the site, if you go here. So I made a fortune content type where the title is just a fortune, right? And then I made a view that just uh, displays all the fortune titles in my system, right? 
So let's say I want to create a whole bunch more. So in here, I have a text file that just has a whole bunch of more portions, portion cookie portions. And then I'm making a uh, made a little script. That loads it. You can see using PHP to load, you can see I'm using the full path to the file. Um, let's see. Uh, load the, all the lines into an array. That's what this does. And I'm going to loop over each portion, create a new node, set the title, set the type to a portion. Then I'm just going to save it. And then I'm going to uh, just tell myself that I'm done. So I'm going to run it first. Oops. Okay. So it does that, which it's not very exciting over here. But here you can see all those nodes have been created. Right? And this this is say my butt a couple of times. There was one one instance where uh, a whole bunch of nodes uh, on the production server got erased when a dev server copied the database was pushed to production and um, luckily the the like the titles they had a a list of everything that needed to be my client had a list of everything that was lost and I was able to take that data kind of massage it a little bit and use this to recreate all those lost nodes. Um, which previously what they when they originally created the nodes they had an intern sitting there and just going through that node ad form um, for I don't know how many times and I was able to do it you know, get them back up and running in a lot less time, which I think uh, surprised me. So they're, um, that's, that's really one cool thing. And there's one last example. So say you're feeling a little froggy. And if you wanted to, like say, you wanted to operate on nodes, like I said, you have the full Drupal APIs available to you, because uh, when you run the script, Use a script command, it bootstraps through Drupal. So here I'm just selecting all the, is it, all the portion nodes. I'm saving them into an array right here. And then I'm just adding a little bit extra to each portion. And so you can see here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using the DB query, which a lot of people probably are familiar with if you're doing uh, module development. And I'm just using the node save again. <coughs> okay. Now you have a funnier fortune sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, there's also, like I mentioned, that's only a couple of the Drupal. I mean, the brush commands, is, there's a lot of other powerful things in here. Um, if you just look at it, there's, they have commands. I haven't actually used it. Like, they have a, a sync command, which allows you to sync, uh, like, say, for example, your dev to your production, which is really cool. It uses rsync. Um, and uh, if you want to clear the cache, if you want to monitor your site, if you want to write some Conscript, you can, it also has cuttings to watch up. And this is just like going to the latest updates. So it's pretty much a similar view into this, this data, which you can script for other things. Maybe you might grep for hard errors or, or uh, you know, to try to detect uh, errors in your site and stuff. And there's also, um, there's also a lot of plugins for, for Drush. If you go to this URL, uh, they have a whole bunch of other modules. I haven't even explored actually any of these. Uh, I was just happy using Drush, but a lot of people are extending it and uh, Making it even more useful, so I encourage you know if, if any of these additional plugins sounds interesting to you, it might help you out, and I encourage you to check it out. 
and also there's a couple if there's last thing is that there's like hidden gems if you look at the help one of the nice things is that uh, each of the commands is really pretty nicely documented If you do drush help and then whatever command, like say test mail, it gives you some extra options. Uh, one of the nice things that I found with drush help I think was uh, status modules. It has this pipe option, which outputs the enabled modules. This is just the enabled modules on your system in uh, just a, a space delimited format, which is, if you do much scripting, which is useful if you want to incorporate this output into other, other scripts. So. Like XRs? Yeah. Exactly. If you need to loop on, on whatever your enabled modules and stuff. One of the things, though, also it, it doesn't do, unfortunately, is it can't update your core system. Like if you wanted to like, update uh, Drupal 12 to 13, um, that's still a manual process. So, but still, when, if you can update all my third-party modules in one fell swoop, that saves me a huge amount of time. That's why I really like it. So I think that's pretty much it for my presentation. That's my contact information. Thanks. So, hope you guys found it useful and hope Thrush saves you some time in the future.